Welcome to BC Outdoor Sport Fishing with your host, Mike Mitchell. BC Outdoor Sport Fishing is brought to you by your Toyota BC dealers, Rapala, Kingfisher, Yamaha, and the Pacific Salmon Foundation. Welcome everybody to BC Outdoor Sport Fishing. I'm your host, Mike Mitchell. Today we're fishing with David Murphy from Murphy Sport Fishing. Dave, welcome to the show. Thanks for being here. Dave, where are we? Uh, we're in Cayucat Sound, okay. which is uh, three quarters up the way up Vancouver Island on okay. the outside, awesome. right? About uh, 90 miles uh, north of Gold River. Cool. Yep. Okay. What are we going to do today, as if I don't know? Well, we're going to go salmon fishing. Sounds right? terrible. Yeah, there's a few out there right <laughs> now, and uh, hopefully we'll get a few to take home, last for the winter. Yeah, Chinook? Um, all Chinook, yeah. Cool. Maybe the odd one right now. Okay. But, yeah, it's good. good. Good fishing. All right, well, enough yeah. talk. Let's go fish. All right. All right. I think he's off the downer, isn't he? Well, Dave, that was quick. Didn't take long, I told you. <laughs> so what there is a lot, there's a lot of little halibut here right now. Okay. Just under, there's like acres of them. Hmm. We're on a real high production point in the halibut cycle, even though the limits is actually low, or it's the poundage and what's in the ocean is increasing like rapidly. Yeah. You know, 20 years, 20 years, I've never seen so many halibut. Oh, really? Yeah, especially in the smaller ones there. A little bit of rough conditions. Dave says we're going offshore. I can see the shore still, Dave. Yeah, it's not too bad. <laughs> not, it's not a couple bad miles out. Let's see what we got there here. You go. You're going to get tired of bringing these little oh, guys geez. in there. He's tiny. They're, yeah, they're tiny. Oh, we'll shake that guy off. That's not what we're looking for, but... Only took about 30 seconds to catch. Perfect. No harm to that fish and gone. Oh, we got one over here. <laughs> Another alley? I don't know. Yep. You can let that one up while we're yep. doing this. How far back, Dave, you go from the uh, You know what? I'm, when I'm, oh, this one just, oh, he's still there. This is a salmon, actually. Is it? Oh, good. Uh, you know, right there is good. Yep. 12 feet is good. Do you figure that's salmon there, Dave? Yeah, for sure. Oh, good. But still put that one down. Yeah, Mike. I will. So that was a pretty good idea to come offshore. Right? Yeah, no kidding. Immediate action. A little runaway. There's other stuff. There's coho out here right now. There's yeah. springs, there's lingcod. That's what fishing's all about too, Dave. Yeah. You never know, right? It's just a little, little salmon, little spring. Coyote spoon. Nice. How deep, Dave, on this side? Uh, 182. 182. Yeah. He's happy. And so Dave, we just turned. Yeah. We we're just talking about the difference in playing with the tide and going against the tide, right? Yeah. So bucking the tide, we didn't get a bite. Nothing. Made the turn, what, take about five seconds? Yeah. And you yeah. were explaining off camera, but explain what the difference is, like what the gears do differently. Well when you're oh we got sorry, I got one here. You got a double header. Look at that. Anyway, with the tide and against the tide. Yeah. You almost always get more bites going with the tide than against the tide. Yeah. Just because your gear, your gear is at a better speed and you're covering a lot of ground. Yeah. 
or the other way you're you're not covering the ground and your gear is going like 100 miles an hour yeah right so they get a longer time to look at it and it doesn't look it doesn't look as, as natural it's not something that's going by quickly yeah it kind of sits there for a while i don't know what you got there i don't know either still staying down a little bit flash has popped though what do you got dave it's just a small spring shaker Okay, if you just hold that out there for a second, I'll yep. get this one down. Yep. He's not going anywhere. I'm gonna let this guy go again for his bigger brother. Yeah. Okay. This guy, I believe, is a hatchery fish, though. Yeah. But he's still a little bit. Yeah, we don't want this guy. Yeah. We're just saying that's. If that were winter time, that would be a beauty, eh? See you, buddy. He's gone. He's forgotten about it already. There's more BC Outdoors sport fishing right after this break. Closed captioning is provided by Ace Line Hauler, the only prawn trap puller built West Coast tough. It's better fish. A little heavier, eh? Right? Yeah, that's a good one, Dave. We start out the day a little bit inside. Yep. Go out here now. What, why pick this water? The ocean's vast and huge. What's the key points for us? Well, aside from the fact you fished here yesterday, you said. Yeah. But. Shallow spot. Yeah. Right? It's all gravel, so it's needlefish. Yeah. So because we're still early in the season, we're in July, so the fish are hanging around. Yeah. And there's big candlefish in here. They're about seven inches long or so. Yeah. And everything comes here to eat. So there's halibut, there's wing cod, there's every kind of salmon. Yeah. Right? And the, you're also talking about the birds too, right? Yeah, there's birds are here, they're eating too, so yeah. Okay. Stuff fishing up. There's, this is there we just go. a dead weight here. Got a double, Dave? Yeah. Nice. It's a salmon. Nice. That's a, you know what, that's a keeper under right there. That's tiny. I, that's what they are. Really? Yeah. So for those that are watching and are doing overs and unders and looking for something under 83 centimeters, that fish is 81 to 83 centimeters. That's what it is. Dinner for six. So you're allowed two, two Chinook a day. Um, as long as they're over 18 inches, but you don't have to worry about that. They can be hatchery or wild. Um, now that's Chinook salmon. You're allowed two others, which can be chum salmon, sockeye when they're open, or hatchery, hatchery coal. This is about a, about a 12 to 14 pound fish. So in the world of eating, this is the number one. Yes. You know, you talk about the great big 30 pounders, Yeah, yeah. right? They're not your table fish. This is, this is the one you want. Right in there. Nice work. That's good fish, Dave. It's nice fish. fish, eh? Look at that. Yeah, yeah. there's absolutely lots. He has actually got an adipose fin. Beautiful fish. Put them away, bleed them. What's something that's really important is you, whenever you catch these things, you want to cut the gill right away. Yeah. Right? Just yep. like any animal there. Through, yeah. Because it makes it such a nice table fish when you do that. Yeah. That come off the downrigger. That's a good sound. <laughs> you really go on that one. But the beauty of this is just there's so many varieties and just so much fish. It's nothing to see. You know, 70, 80 fish on the dock for yeah. 15 guys. That's a awesome. Day. I get him. Nice work. Good job, Dave. See, not much paint left on no, that sucker. That thing's been yeah. uh, hooked a few times. Yeah. This hatchery fish. Yeah. So not a giant. Clips gone. Yeah. Off. So, so again, this is this is another reason why the Pacific Salmon Foundation is so important, right? They do a lot of work with the different hatcheries and absolutely and uh, habitat reconstruction, all that, right? And without those guys, you know, we're without, not out here retaining these type of fish, right? It's probably 60, 70 percent hatchery yeah. out here, clip fish. So yeah. without hatchery fish, we we don't really have a fishery. That's right. You know, so yeah, that's right. It's nice to see another table, table there's, fish. And there's your conservation stamp at work right there. Yeah, that's exactly what you pay for. There you right go. There. Awesome. Let's get them in the box and yeah, I'll bleed, bleed them out and get another fish here. So we've let go of what four to three halibut so far and yeah. probably a dozen salmon. Yeah. We got one in the box. So what do you think of that guy? That is a perfect under as well, but we're gonna let him go. Oh, 
Exciting stuff going on everywhere here. Look at that. See you, buddy. Yeah, he's fish on there. And you're gonna get tired of it, I'm telling you. Still three bites in what about yeah. 15 seconds with the lines uh, in? Is it that much, Dave? Yeah. <laughs> Lots of salmon. Lots of salmon. You can't keep the uh, West Coast Vancouver Island. You can't keep the uh, Wild coho. This one's got a fin, so we gotta let her go. Wow, this is ridiculously good action. <laughs> Learning with the pros. Brought to you by your Toyota BC dealers. With today's new downriggers, the high speed ones, they haul a lot of weight compared to the old ones, so Standard, they come with um, cable or braid, right? Uh, the cable is good for the lighter weights, say up to 15 pounds, but when you, once you get into the heavier weights, you want to switch to braid. And a good example of this is you can see this one's already got a fray, and any kind of kink or fray you have in your line, it'll cause your line to break and you'll lose your, your lead. And as everybody knows, leads are very, very expensive now. Um, so what I'm going to show you today is how to take the cable off and put on a braid, right, which will hold an 18 to 20 pound ball. Um, now the first thing to do is uh, take the lid off the downrigger, which is fairly easy. Slide her off. First thing you want to do is take the wrench off, and then you can slide the belt off. Okay, by doing that, when you pull back the brake, it's absolutely free spooled. If you can just lean into, into the downrigger and just start pulling. So here we are, we've come to the end. And uh, a quick little trick is instead of taking all the wire off, leave about uh, 20 inches or so, or I'm going to leave three feet just because I'm working here, okay? Give it a cut, okay? And we're going to attach the braid, okay? It's a simple knot. It's called an Albright knot, and it's used all, all over the world for attaching different size lines together. And uh, there you go. It's a nice, clean knot. So now you got to put your downrigger back together because you need the counter on because you want to know how much you're putting on. Start it off nice and slow. Just get it spooling nice. When you're comfortable with everything the way it's working, then you can turn her back on. And I just use my hand to spool it. And I'm watching the counter. Okay, there's 300 feet. To attach the, the braid to the ball, you don't want to just tie a, tie a knot because you need to have stops and stuff like that. So take your braid, come back about four feet or so. Doubled up, I've got a loop here. And I'm just gonna tie a double overhand knot. Taking our double double hand knot and we formed a big loop. Okay, this so it serves two purposes. One, it gives us a a nice double loop to put on our stop bead. Okay, take my ganja and it's tied in a loop, 48 inches or so. So we're gonna go loop to loop. Okay, so now we got another loop at the end here, and this is where we're gonna attach our cannonball. You just loop it through. And that's where it lives, just like that. So when the downrigger comes on, comes up, it's gonna come, it's gonna hit that stop and stop it. Okay? So this is gonna leave the cannonball down in the water on most boats about two or three feet. And uh, now there's lots of tips on the website, BC Outdoors, just like this one. So if you uh, want to find out some other useful stuff, uh, look us up on the net. There's more BC Outdoors sport fishing right after this break. Let's get back on the water with BC Outdoor Sport Fishing. That's the sound we need to That's hear. That's a good fish, eh? Yeah. I'm just that. gonna turn around here and... Sure. So you might get a little bit of slack. Okay, but... yeah, just work the boats. Am I okay out that way? With yeah, I think so. Right I'm, just okay, I'm just gonna lean. Just trying to uh, get a brace here. Hey, another up. Oh, there we go. Double. And no, folks, I haven't been drinking. It's just you got a double, Dave. Oh, yeah. there goes mine, ticking off again. Awesome. Actually, cool because on some of the swells, the fish is actually higher than the boat. Yeah. Oh, there he is. Oh. 
That's a decent keeper there. Yeah. I don't know what I got. Oh. Double header. The minute we did that turn though, bang, yeah, bang. Yeah, it's instant, right? Awesome. I just got a little shaker on this side. Oh yeah, that's a good fish. You can see the gray out yeah. there. Yeah. You're my first keeper of the day, David. Yeah, it's a good one. I just got a little mini. Little guy. Little hatchery mini. See you, buddy. Okay, this guy's just kind of keeping him out there. Enough tension on him, Dave, but I yeah, think, oh, there, a good jump there. I'll just be a... And he's gone. Ah. On the boat. Listen to that. Gaining ground again, Dave. You're getting close. <laughs> That's a decent fish, eh? That's good fish. Early season Chinook fishery from Cayuca here. I see him right there. Yeah, you can sneak in all back up here. Give you the best angle you need. There he That's is. a better fish. Look at that guy. Oh, next time up, we'll get him. I can't see him. He's in a light to medium action. That's a battle. Mooching eh? reels, too, yeah. Mooching rods. Look how be nice to him right by the yeah, boat yeah. here. Yeah, well, kicker, 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 kicker. Thank you. Good job. Yeah. Hey, look at that. <laughs> Beautiful. That's a nice one. Woo. That was a good burn. Look at that one. That's a good fish. Yeah, for a big guy. <laughs> I think. What do you mean this, big? this fish is way what bigger than it looks like on TV. Yeah, hold on. Move it up closer. Yeah. Put it near you then. How's that? <laughs> there, oh, look at that. There we go. That's a 12 monster. foot sturgeon. All right, open up that box. 22 pounder. And now, here are all the secrets of our tackle and gear. Hello folks, we're gonna to talk to you a little bit about the gear that we've been using on today's episode. Uh, we started out with the new uh, classic mooching rod, and this is the 10 foot six medium light edition, which is great action on the fish today, wasn't it? It was, it was a good rod, it was great. It was cool. It's perfect. So, and then we paired up, of course, with our North Coast uh, mooching reel, and added on some suffix. I went up to a 25 pound test for this season just in case there's some big boys lurking. And it worked out pretty well for us, right? right? Yeah, yeah, it worked out good. Sure. And then Dave, of course, when we come into new areas, we've got to rely on the experts. So this is where you come in with your colors of flashers and, oh, and spoons and absolutely. stuff today. Pretty pretty straightforward stuff today. You know, green green flasher was seen to be the hot ticket yeah, there. Sure coyote so. spoon. Um, coyote spoons, now they come in lots of colors and sizes and stuff like that. And the three and a half seems to be working the best. You know, the fish are feeding on the yeah. small needle, needle fish, yeah. right? Yeah. Now, one of the keys to this is, um, is uh, the 30 pound test. We use 30 pound yeah. suffix. Yeah, the fluorocarbon, right? yeah. And with the smaller spoon, you want the light line, right? It'll flutter a little bit, mm -hmm. right? Once you get to the bigger spoons, you can move up to the 40, you know, even heavier, yeah. right? If the bigger fish are around, yeah. but you're, you're better just to change your leaders often and use a lighter line. Let's talk uh, a little bit about the leader length too. Yeah, for sure. So what I always do, a six, six feet, feet is pretty standard, okay. right? For a leader length. Right. If there's lots of boats, right, and the fish are shy, or you're new to an area and you don't really know the game, lengthen it up. Right. Go eight, yeah. nine, ten feet. Right. That's a great tip. Yeah. Uh, it's a really good tip because yeah. you know most guys are running six feet, but beware because longer leader, harder to get into the boat. Sure. Right. So now you're coming to the sure. to the boat and he's ten feet away. Yeah. Right. So you'll get more, but it's a little harder to land. Right. Cool. And again, so of course the other things we're using today, the big uh, 24, 25 Kingfisher. Yeah, it's a great boat. Yeah, all done yeah. out with the 225. HDS 10s, dual stations, yeah. that's pretty nice. The Yamaha that's, Power, yeah. Scotty new high performance downers, which we've you've rigged up now yep. and put some braid on there for us. Yep. We great, great to try that this 20 season. 20 pound cannonballs. Yeah. Yeah. Told I've opened my eyes. Yeah, there you Good go. Good stuff. Anyway, folks, uh, this is just a quick list of ours, of course what we've used. We'll follow up again with a written list here for you so you can take notes and so we'll see you out on the water. All Tackle and Gear is available at Steveston Marine and Hardware. This is decent. Double header. Yeah. So how many fish have we caught in the last couple uh, hours? I don't want to brag, Dave, but <laughs> it's been ridiculous. Yeah. I was just sitting there thinking, oh, it'd be nice to have a little lull now. Yeah. And grab a drink of water. Uh, very, uh, very lucky to be able to come up and fish up here with you yeah. again. You know what, I like having you here because you're always so excited about yeah. that. <laughs> it's right. Fishing, everybody says how, how lucky I am. Yeah. Must be nice and I, I truly am. I, I, I don't take it for granted, that's for sure. Yeah. I, uh, I really enjoy the sport of fishing. 
Well, and I just love the opportunity to catch fish. It just it puts a smile on your face, yeah, no matter no, what. Absolutely. And you know what? There's there's no better way to bring people together, right? Yeah. It's excuse. Like we get so many dads with their kids and stuff yeah. like that, and it's just there's so many other things to do now. Yeah. Right? Distracting, but oh, video you know, games you, put, and... you put a fishing trip on the table, and yeah. everybody seems to find time. And... Yeah, I think some of the times I've taken my kid out fishing, and it's some of the best times you have. I got a five-year-old daughter, Marley, now, who is absolutely crazy about fishing. And uh, that's a good one. That's a nice that's fish. That will keep this one. I sort of got one problem I got. You got a, a Halley there. Okay, I've got a Halley, so I'm just going to put this in the sure. rod holder, and I'll grab the I'll net. Sneak, I'll let you sneak underneath me here. I can probably about tell you about every single day I fish with my kids. Yeah, right? that's right. Awesome. And I fish every single day. You remember those days. Okay, I'm going to get his head up here, Dave. Okay. There's our friend, the Chinook. Yeah. Come on, buddy. All right, I got him. Nice. <laughs> How are you doing? All right. Beautiful. Nice, nice one, Mike. Beauty. Oh, that's nothing to shake a stick at. No, that's what that's they are. beautiful fish. Just, I'll show the viewers this beautiful fish in a second here. <laughs> so that's that's our four, right? That's four. Yeah. That's it for the day. That's it for us for salmon. Huh. For sure. A little disappointed. Yeah. So what is it, noon? If that, Yet? yeah, no, I don't know, I don't think so. A couple awesome. hours, I think, so. Well, I'm gonna thank you, I'm gonna shake your hand after, but I yeah. wanna thank you for having us up at uh, Tayuka Tayuk near Murphy Sport Fishing. Folks, this is uh, uh, early July, yeah. early season fishery. These are beautiful table fair fish. Absolutely. We'll take this one home, we'll really enjoy it. And you will, you know, it's, it's, it's you get such a variety up here, yeah. right? Yeah, thanks for having us. No, you're That's welcome. a treat. Come back anytime. And, uh, you know, thank you viewers for joining us as well on another episode of BC Outdoor Sport Fishing. Stay tuned, we'll have our uh, question and answer period here uh, via Facebook and Twitter uh, during the credits. BC Outdoors Sport Fishing has been made possible by your Toyota BC dealers. Rapala, crafted from experience. Yamaha, what kind of Yamaha are you? Kingfisher, fish the good times. The Pacific Salmon Foundation, bringing them back stream by stream, along with- Are you ready? Yep. Got some questions for you, Dave. On the sure. internet, via yeah. Facebook and Twitter. Okay, question number one is from Bud Alcock. It's regarding salmon fishing. Do you know a little bit about this? A little bit, yeah. Okay. Uh, what would be the average correct trolling speed using a downrigger, flasher, and hoochie? 2.5 to 3 miles an hour. Good. Good. Check mark on that one.